Now, back in 2015, Fetty Wap was hands down one of the hottest new rappers in the game. Fetty Wap's buzz was pretty much unmatchable. His Trap Queen song was the song that first introduced Fetty Wap to the entire world, and Trap Queen was first released back in May 2014, but the song didn't really catch any attention until the beginning of 2015. Fast forward that same year, a couple months later in July, Trap Queen peaked at number 8 on the Billboard charts. And around that same time, Drake jumped on Fetty Wap's My Way remix, which further added some steam to his name name as a new rapper. All I gotta do is put my mind to this shit. Goddamn. Cancel out my ex, I put a line through that bitch. And Fetty also had his 679 hit song buzzing all over the place and things were looking good for him. But they also changed extremely fast. But Fetty Wap's sound was a different one. The perfect time for Fetty Wap to blow up as an artist was 2015 because around that time, we had artists like Dej Loaf and even Post Malone who were kind of getting the same type of success with the same kind of sound and rap. These were all people who shared the same qualities when it came to the type of music they were making. But in that mix, Fetty Wap was one of the few people who had extreme success. Fun and actually good vocals, extremely melodic, but at the same time he knows how to switch up his delivery in such a cool and natural way. These were all things Fetty Wap was known for from the get-go. Musically speaking, Fetty Wap was taking so much from what was quote-unquote popping at that time and he created his own unique sound. A lot of people were gravitating towards it, hence to why he actually became the superstar within a couple of months. But the really big issue with Fetty Wap and his come up is one thing and one thing only, hit songs. Now hit songs in hip pop is something that everyone wants. Your first hit song can pretty much turn you from a struggling rapper to a touring all over the world, selling out shows, dropping albums and labels, begging you to sign with them type of rapper. And that's the time we live in considering social media is prospering so much. There are simply no gatekeepers anymore. And the only people who decide who's gonna make it or not is the fans, aka you who are watching this. The issue with Fetty Wap has always been that he never got the chance to show different sides of him as an artist so he could cultivate that deep and immense fan base that would stick with him, even if the rest of the world didn't want to support him anymore. And Fetty Wap's crutch was the hit songs that were kind of separating him from that next level where a real and supportive fan base to cultivate would be the best thing for him. Fetty Wap's Trap Queen song was the third song that he had ever recorded, and a little over a year of it being released, it was on the Billboard charts. Now that really tells you how little Fetty Wap had to do to actually get to the position he was in, but let's compare Fetty Wap to an artist like Post Malone. Now Post Malone and Fetty Wap came out at the same time which was the beginning of 2015 they also had the same type of musical style and a lot of people who were fans of Post Malone were also fans of Fetty Wap and vice versa but fast forward almost three years in the future Fetty Wap is nowhere to be seen or heard and Post Malone is all over the place but what went wrong on Fetty Wap's path and what did Post Malone do that Fetty Wap should have done the number one mistake Fetty Wap did was not expanding himself musically as we've talked about before musically speaking Fetty Wap had exactly what it took to blow up as a rapper, but what Fetty Wap didn't have is what it takes to make the listeners and the supporters want to stay. If you think about it, an artist like Post Malone didn't really blow up and stay relevant off his hit songs. It's undeniable that White Iris and By Post was the song that basically gave him the opportunity to get to the point where he is today. And yes, Go Flex, Too Young and Congratulations all boosted Post to the top. But did Post Malone really rely on his hit song formula? Absolutely not. What made me and a lot of other people fall in love with Post was because there was more to him than just a hit song. Post Malone is a master at incorporating so many different sounds in his music while using his influences to the fullest. And he simply executes it well. And except all the hit songs he has under his belt, you know that there's something under the surface of Post Malone since you've seen these different musical sides from him as an artist. And that's exactly what Fetty Wap didn't do and didn't have. Fetty Wap's downfall could be described with these words. One dimensional. Even though Fetty Wap had a great deal of talent? I mean the guy could sing no questions asked. Even his talent couldn't make him stay on top. Now reminiscing back on the time when Fetty Wap came out as this hot new rapper, I don't know about you but it all feels like a blur. I logically know that Fetty Wap had an extremely hot streak during 2015 and everyone was counting on him to be the next big sound, but his presence in hip hop never really stuck with me. And the impact he had with his existence is really nothing but a blur in my memory. In an interview with Sway from October of this year, Fetty Wap decided to speak about the whole controversy of him actually falling off and this is what he had to say. For me, it was, oh, Fetty Wap, he fell off and he ain't, he not doing this and you know, you know what I'm saying? And 
to me, it was like nobody was understanding what I was really doing. Like, if you listen to all the, all the music I made, it was do this for the family and uh-huh. get right for the family and do this for my kids and do this for my mama, get my bros right. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, uh-huh. it's not about how fast or just because my shit not as extravagant as anybody else. It, it takes time to build that shit. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. and that's all I want to do. I want to be just like another Jay Z and have a Rock Nation or another mm-hmm. if he didn't have a Bad Boys. When they see me, I'm a Fetty Wap going to be RG after Island. You know what I'm saying? And that's just trying to play chess instead of play checkers. The sound in hip hop is constantly changing and we can see that by the type of rappers that have been blowing up for the past two years. Looking at the placement of Fetty Wap as an artist, it feels like he doesn't fit in what's quote unquote popping right now. I feel like Fetty Wap got kind of left behind in the past because the sound in the hip hop world was changing right as he blew up. Maybe if Fetty Wap learned how to transition with the change in the music world, then he would most likely be one of the top guys right now. And I wouldn't be surprised if Fetty Wap was in the spot post Malone is in 2017 if he still would be as relevant as he was. Apart from that, I do think that Fetty Wap is gonna come back and take the world by storm. I've seen that recently he's been in the studio with Takashi 69 so I'm really curious to see how that's gonna sound. But we can't forget that Fetty Wap's talent is undeniable. And I know that Fetty Wap is one of the best at what he does, especially if he gets in a zone of making music and staying on top. So the future for Fetty Wap is still bright. But what's your personal opinion on this topic? Do you think that Fetty Wap fell off or do you think that he did not fall off? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and let's have a discussion about this. And as always don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This channel is all about bringing together people like you who enjoy music and start a discussion on different topics like this. And of course like the video if you enjoyed it. Follow me on Twitter at Blackie Speaks and I'm out.